the Nazis made careful studies of the terror bombings on civilians, while Britain and France stuck fast to their policy of non-intervention. Non-intervention, that was a gimmick conceived by Chamberlain. Holy earth and bow. And you know, when the bus bombs were falling over England, although I regretted it very much, I would say, this is compensation. I am a believer of those things, of compensation. Not that God punished England, but there's a law of compensation somewhere. You do evil, and evil will be done to you eventually. Chamberlain was a treacherous man. Chamberlain cost Spain to lose by the embargo. We couldn't get any weapons. We couldn't get any food because Holy Earth and Thou Britain blockaded Spain. But the war went on. In July 1938, on a 30-mile front along the River Ebro, the Republicans launched a new offensive. It would be their last. When we were going across the River Ebro, every fourth or every fifth soldier didn't even have a rifle or any ammunition. You know, a soldier feels when he's going into battle, he feels like that he should have at least a rifle and some ammunition. And I hollered, how about some rifles? I said, we're 25 rifles short of our company of 120 men. And they said, there's all kinds of rifles over the fastest, there's got all kinds, we can get them all over there. And that's exactly what happened. We crossed the River Ebro in the morning. So in uh, about an hour's time, everybody had enough ammunition and enough uh, rifles. The Republicans pushed back the Nationalists 25 miles. At the height of victory, in September 1938, the international brigades were withdrawn from the lines. Republican Prime Minister Juan Negrin said he had made this gesture in order to eliminate all possible doubt about the genuinely national character of the cause for which the Republican army is fighting. He had hoped that the Italians would respond by withdrawing the black shirts and the Germans would call off the Condor Legion. To the surprise of no one, Hitler and Mussolini were not interested. For the surviving members of the international brigades, there was a farewell parade in Barcelona. Comrades of the international brigades, political reasons, reasons of state, the welfare of that same cause for which you offered your blood with boundless generosity are sending you back, some of you to your own countries and others to forced exile. You can go proudly. You are history. You are legend. We shall not forget you. And when the olive tree of peace puts forth its leaves again, come back. Come back to us. Those of you who have no country will find one. Those of you who have to live deprived of friendship will find friends. And all of you will find the love and gratitude of the whole Spanish people who, now and in the future, will cry out with all their hearts, long live the heroes of the International Brigade. When we came back, we didn't come back as heroes. We were recognized by the Canadian people and they met us practically at every station, you know. But as far as the Canadian authorities are concerned, they kept the trains locked uh, from Montreal till we reached Toronto. When we reached Toronto, I don't know, the Canadian government didn't give any information. But the people knew somehow, at every station there was groups of people yelling, uh, hooray for, the, for our boys and uh, welcome back and we're glad you are safe and things like that, you know. When we came to the Union Station in Toronto, there was thousands of people. There was no place left in the station or outside the station. And uh, believe me, it, it touches my heart even now that I cried. I weighed, only, I weighed only 128 pounds at that time. Lice ate me. I had no clothing. This is how the fascists ravaged the whole country of Spain. And uh, 
When we came back to the station, we seen our friends. It was just pathetic. I, I, I cried at the station. I still, every time I mention that, I cry. And th this is how the battles are lost, and this is how the battles are won through that experience. On March 31st, 1939, the war was over. Franco held a victory parade in Madrid and expressed his gratitude to Hitler and Mussolini for their assistance. Five months later, Germany attacked Poland and the Second World War began. An organization called the Friends of the Mackenzie Papineau Battalion tried to keep a file on every Canadian that went to Spain. After their return home, many of them re-enlisted in the Canadian Army after Canada went to war with Germany to fight against an enemy they had come to know so well. After the war in 1949, the association folded. Pictures, military records, souvenirs brought back from Spain were donated to museums, libraries, and universities. The Spanish people would be gladly to accept the type of government we have here in Canada right now. They would accept that type of government. Yeah. That's what they were looking for. And the most important right under democracy is the right to go to the polls and vote every four or five years. This is the fundamental right. Viva la quinta brigada, rumba, 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 r